to take. You know, uh, we uh, we love each other so much. We've been married over 40 years. And you know what? I just thought I knew what having a, a real relationship with my wife was all about for many, many years. But you know, after I experienced freedom, and I, ex I shared earlier about that I was in a tremendous bondage, but after, after I experienced that freedom, our relationship changed too. And that is just opening up enough just to say, us and Jesus, just come in Jesus within our marriage. And it changed, it changed our relationship. It bonded it and it just made it so special. And I just thank the Lord and praise the Lord for that relationship and for that freedom that I've experienced. That's true and also uh, we're finding that the Lord is in the process of freeing other members of our family, not, not just our immediate family, but our extended family, and it is awesome. Well, my name is Don Dickerman, and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today, uh, uh, helping you to understand and maybe prepare for the deliverance process. Uh, I guess the first thing uh, I want to do is uh, say just briefly what demons are. Uh, sometimes people have that question. Jesus called them uh, several things, um, uh, evil spirits, unclean spirits, uh, spirits of infirmity, spirits of jealousy, spirits of fear, uh, devils, and, uh, and, and there are many names, there are many terms that uh, refer to demons in, in the Bible. As a matter of fact, there are many, many references to uh, these evil spirits. But what demons are, in essence, they're fallen angels. When God created holy angels, uh, he must have uh, created billions of them. Uh, there's, there's really no way of knowing. It's an innumerable uh, uh, number of demons, so uh, of uh, created beings, that uh, a third of them rebelled with Satan, fell with Satan, uh, in his fall, and in essence they became the opposites of what they were created to be. If an angel as a ministering spirit was created to minister peace and harmony, uh, hope, those type of things, as a demon power, he does exactly the opposite. Uh, spirits of infirmity uh, would, be, would have been perhaps holy angels that were created to minister health. And so, uh, in a, a simple way of saying it, uh, demons are uh, fallen angels and uh, they are spirits and since we are a spirit being, then uh, it's not uh, uncommon, it's not, I mean it's not hard to imagine that, uh, that spirit beings have contacts with us. We are uh, a spirit, an eternal being that has a soul that lives in a body and of course the body is uh, is temporary so that demons could get into a believer get into our lives is uh, is not really complicated they get in uh, the same way jesus gets into a believer's life he said behold i stand at the door and knock and if any man will open the door i will come into him uh, same principle is with demons. They, uh, they knock, they try to gain entrance, they do uh, uh, gain entrance uh, in, in the lives of believers. Uh, deliverance is for God's children. It's children's bread. In the book of Matthew chapter 15, uh, there's a woman, <clears throat> a Syrophoenician woman, a Gentile, who came to Jesus and uh, ask for help for her little girl. She said, my little girl is grievously vexed with the devil. And Jesus basically said, uh, I came to the lost sheep of Israel and you're not an Israelite. You don't qualify. And the woman uh, fell at his feet. He said, it's not right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs or to the Gentiles. The woman said, Truth, Lord, but she fell at his feet and worshipped him and said, Even the puppies, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And when she 
uh, showed great faith. That's what Jesus called it. He said, O woman, great is your faith, and be it unto you according as you will. His little, uh, the little girl was healed uh, instantly. And uh, she qualified when she exhibited faith, when she placed faith in Christ, when she became one of the children. So deliverance is for the children. The common question that I get uh, about deliverance is uh, how can a Christian have a demon? Doesn't the Holy Spirit live there? Well, of course he does. He lives in our spirit. No demon can get in our spirit. They get in the soul and in the flesh. And that's the war. That's the conflict that uh, the Apostle Paul talked about. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. And, and so uh, the, the conflict is because the demons get in our flesh, in our thought life, in our soul, our mind, our will, emotions. And a good example of that is... Um, is uh, the uh, tabernacle or the, the temple of God had an outer court which would be similar to our body, uh, uh, the holy place which would be similar to uh, our soul, and then the holy of holies where the Spirit of God dwells, our spirit. So the conflict is uh, not possession, demons don't possess us, we're possessed by the Holy Spirit of God. We're purchased, redeemed, bought with a price. So the, the uh, truth is our soul and our flesh can be and is uh, occupied many times by demons and they control certain areas of our life. They tor they're tormentors. Uh, so that's one way to look at it. Another way is when uh, Jesus came into the temple and uh, it was defiled. There were uh, money changers and cattle and uh, the presence of God was there, but there was also corruption and Jesus drove them out. He cast them out of his father's temple. And so that's a, that's a simple way to look at it. Um, the principles of deliverance, uh, deliverance for some reason is a, a word that's been misused and uh, Hollywood has, has messed it up and some of the things that people have seen over the years on television with um, I would say just phony uh, phony evangelism is uh, it, it's not about yelling at people and holding people down and uh, I've never seen anyone's head spin never seen green vomit or anything like that that's Hollywood uh, genuine deliverance is the holy word and I would encourage anybody that's uh, seeing this to to look at it as an elevation in Christianity as a move upward uh, in the life of, of a believer it's ridding yourself of uh, I, I view it sometimes like a um, one of these hot air balloons that uh, has weights holding it down and when the weights are cut loose the balloon can rise and so same way with deliverance once the tormentors are gone uh, peace can come the Holy Spirit can minister without interference and uh, that's the basic principle there are there are maybe four principles that apply uh, in this deliverance process and they're very simply this either a person has a demon or they don't uh, that's the first thing you either do or you don't Second thing is if you do, if you do have demons, and I would say uh, at some point in time everybody does. Maybe it's been dealt with, maybe it's not. Uh, but uh, if you do have a demon, if an evil spirit is present, it's because he has some kind of legal right. Demons can't just decide to say, let's go invade Don Dickerman. That's not an option they have. There must first be a doorway. Uh, some kind of legal permission that that demon has and uh, uh, I'll talk about some of those permissions in just a second but the third principle uh, you either have them or you don't if you do have them then it's because the demon had some kind of legal right and the third principle is demons have no rights that cannot be canceled cannot be voided that cannot be removed by the work of the cross, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
We have, as believers, we have certain inalienable rights that cannot be removed. I have the right to be called the Son of God, the sons of God. I have eternal life. Nobody can take that from me, and I can't even give it up. I'm in the family. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. That's an inalienable right. Demons don't have any such rights. And then the fourth principle is once those permissions, those legal rights have been canceled, then we as believers have absolute authority in the name of Jesus Christ to cast them out. Now, interestingly, we do everything but that in the church today. We uh, counsel, we try to counsel them out. Uh, we try to uh, medicate them out. We try to read them out uh, with the Word of God. Um, very seldom is that what uh, it, does that work because Jesus said, cast them out. Um, so we, we do everything but what he said to do. And, uh, but we have authority in the name of Jesus Christ to cast out evil spirits once their permission has been canceled. So it's not about authority alone. And that's where a lot of deliverance ministries and, and pastors have erred, I believe, in focusing only on the authority of the name of Jesus. The authority is no good if the demon has been granted legal permissions by God. Now, what are some of those rights? Uh, I guess you'd call them uh, doorways, how demons get into a believer. There's, there's numerous ways, and I'm going to mention a few. Uh, generational curse is probably the most common that is the sins of your forefathers uh, and that's right in the heart of the Ten Commandments Jesus said I will visit or I will allow iniquity to the children of the third and fourth generation for the sins of the fathers unconfessed sin of things that were that your ancestors may have been involved in. Now, we don't know. Nobody knows uh, what uh, our, our uh, third and fourth generation ancestors may have been involved in. So that's generally the most common thing that uh, we encounter is permission. And the way I see that working is when there's the first hint of life, when a, a child is first conceived, um, Somewhere in the courtrooms of heaven, angels approach God and say, we have rights to bless that child and to minister to that child by uh, the, the, uh, the things that went on in the ancestry. Uh, and at the same uh, time, I believe demons uh, approach God and say, we have rights also by permission of curse uh, to cause problems and bring curse into that child's life. And God says, yes, you do. That's legal rights. And so anyone that's born today, if you're alive today, there's a chance that you may have demons from the, the unconfessed, unrepented sins in your ancestry. That's probably the most common. Secret societies, oaths, vows, pledges, uh, ceremonies, uh, from your ancestors or from your life, uh, fraternities, secret organizations, uh, like Freemasonry, uh, that's an example. And then childhood traumas, uh, things that you experienced in, in your childhood that were traumatic, uh, oftentimes that opens doors uh, for demons, spoken words, harsh words, 